Over the summer, I've been doing a lot of reflection. My summer break always feels like the end of an era and the start of a new one. The holiday being the end of the year and getting back to work feels like the start of a new year. To me, this time of the year feels even more like a fresh start than the 1st of January. I've been reflecting and thinking a lot about the past year and my life in general. I'm very grateful for the way this past year has unfolded. Many beautiful things have happened. I've grown a lot as a person. I reached many of my goals. I've learned new skills and got better at my current skills. My channel has grown a lot, which was a bit unexpected, but really amazing. But it also brought some changes with it. During my summer break, I've been really inspired by Roya's videos. She has a YouTube channel called Uprooted, where she talks about spiritual topics. She is such a sweet soul with the most beautiful laugh. Her videos really feel like having a chat with a good friend. They always make me feel good. In one video, she was hiking in the woods and talking about the power of knowing what we need. How it's different in every situation. To explain what she meant, she used this example. When you walk in the cool shade of the forest on a cool day, some warm sunlight on your skin is very pleasant and very welcome. But when you've walked in the sun for a long time on a really hot day, the shade of one tree can be a great relief. And at that moment, the shade is very pleasant and very welcome. So in every situation in your life, you may need different things. What you need today might not be what you need tomorrow or even in a few hours. And it's certainly not what other people tell you you need. It does not need to be what you see other people do on the internet or in your close circle. I think we often forget to ask ourselves this question. What do I need? What do I need right now? We often ask ourselves, what do I need to do today? What does the other person need from me? What are my obligations? But we often forget to ask, what do I need? It's quite a rebellious thing to ask yourself these days. And it's not as easy to answer as it may seem on the surface. It is such a simple question, but what do you really need? For me this summer, it was pretty simple. I needed rest. I find it hard to share with you, but I had been working pretty hard before my summer break, making 40 to 50 hour work weeks and trying to maintain the home, my relationships, my family and some me time all at the same time. This may seem like normal life to a lot of people, but as someone who wants to work part time and live a slow and simple lifestyle, it feels like a lot. I felt quite overworked. I was making videos about simple living, but for a few weeks I had too little time to live the simple lifestyle myself. I got so absorbed by making videos and growing my channel despite all my efforts of living simply. The past year I often felt like I didn't have enough time, like I always needed to rush things. So I reminded myself of my own words, there's always enough time. When it feels like you have too little, you just want too much. It means it's time to prioritize and skip the things that are not important to you. By not choosing what is important, you choose to let your free time be consumed by your to-do list. I let myself be dragged away in the constant pool to participate in this hectic pace of our society. I worked during the day and some evenings and in the weekend I was cleaning the home, seeing family and tying up loose ends. Some of my good habits suffered from it and most importantly, my inner peace suffered from it. What I needed was some rest, but it also made me question what I need in the future. So I think the question, what do I need, should be answered twice. You should answer it in a short term basis, what do I need right now? and check in with yourself throughout the day. It is really a lesson in getting to know yourself, listening to yourself and your own body. Sometimes you may need to take a few calm breaths. 
Sometimes you may need to call your mom or a friend. And other times what you need is doing the work, getting the thing on your mind done. So I see it as a continuous practice of listening to your body, mind and soul. Which is really easy to forget in our daily life. It truly takes a lot of mindfulness and concentration. The second way to answer the question, what do I need, is to answer it more long term. It made me think about what I need in my life. How do I want to spend my days? What is overcomplicating my life? What do I need to be happy in life? What should my life look like to feel like a fulfilling life that is worth living? Asking yourself the real questions that matter in life. Before my summer break, YouTube was complicating my life more than I wanted it to. I did really enjoy making videos and all my videos were genuine, but I was giving so much of my time and energy that it wasn't sustainable in the long run. Or at least, that's not how I want to live my life in the long run. I do really enjoy making videos and want to continue making them, but I need to find a better, healthier balance. I'm really proud of myself to catch my mistakes before I'm really burned out and overworked. I now recognize the signs I experienced before with my sports career and my teaching career and I'm so glad that I got better at catching myself from making the same mistakes again. Ideally I would quit my nanny job and just do YouTube 30 hours a week, but that's not an option right now. Wouldn't life be great if not everything was always about money? if we could do what feels meaningful to us. We could choose to spend our days in a way that fills our bucket with joy. I try to live as much of my life in a way I would if money wasn't an issue. Trying to participate as little as possible in the belief that money is everything that matters. Trying to distance and detach myself from our money-driven beliefs. But instead focusing on love, nature, community, basically the happiness money can buy. I also considered quitting this YouTube channel, as it takes up a lot of my time. And I think it's important to always evaluate what you are doing to see if you're still on the right path. It made me think of why I started this channel in the first place. I started it because it was fun, but also because I was missing something in my life. With my nanny work, I was missing a sense of direction, a sense of purpose and something that was challenging and exciting. My nanny work was and is a little too boring, so I think if I would quit YouTube it would be fine for the first few months, but I would probably end up with the same problem. I would feel like there was purpose lacking in my life. Thich Nhat Hanh teaches about aimlessness and how there is no goal to be reached. Walking the path is the goal. And I do believe that's true. I do believe that ultimately there's not a goal to be reached and we should be practicing aimlessness. It is very calming and brings a lot of peace. But I also struggle with this. I feel like I have a positive impact with my YouTube channel, that it's meaningful beside what I do in my day-to-day -day life. If I would quit my YouTube channel, I wonder if I would feel content not working towards something. Would I be happy living with complete aimlessness? Or do I need some sense of purpose to feel content about my days? Being mindful and practicing aimlessness often makes me feel at peace. But will life feel pointless if I'm not working towards something? What do I need to live a content, simple life? Honestly, I don't exactly know. Thich Nhat Hanh lived with aimlessness, but also achieved many great things in life. He wrote over a hundred books and built an entire community. He lived a life of balance, but also did many things in his lifetime. I think the key was that he made sure that the things that he did felt meaningful every step along the way. In my life, things feel meaningful, like taking care of my pets, keeping the house clean and enjoying nature, Making videos is meaning for me, as well as it is a creative outlet for me where I can learn, explore and have fun. At the same time, I can connect with you and hopefully have a positive impact on people's life. 
for now it means that I will spend less time making videos every week to maintain a better balance. Overworking is not sustainable and not fun. Which left me with the question, do I make less videos which are highly edited, just like this one? Or do I make more videos but less edited, so I can share more of my life but in a way that would be more talking and less b-roll. It would look a little less polished. We'll see how things unfold while I slow down and try to start living in a way where time is abundant instead of scarce. I made a weekly schedule for myself where there's more me time, to have a clear idea when I should be doing work and when I should not be doing work. To make time for things that make me grow as a person and that make me enjoy life. There have been so many things that I would love to do which I just didn't get around to doing just because I was too busy. I would love to learn how to knit my own socks, to learn about astrology, I would love to read or listen to some new books, to have some exercise in my weekly routine and to visit the forest more often. And for the longest time I wanted to start volunteering at the animal shelter. But I can't do everything all at once. There's always this difficult balance between having a life that truly feels simple and not just filling my time with a ton of other stuff. For now I already chose to join a Sangha. I've been attending meetings for a few months since I posted the video about how to find adult friends and it has been lovely so far. Maybe I'll share more about it in the future. The Sangha helps me to stay away from forgetfulness. The meetings are like a little anchor to stay mindful. So hopefully, while staying mindful, I can keep asking myself, what do I need?